everyone, Jo here with another Time for Tea Designs tutorial. In today's video, um, that was recorded in Thursday's Facebook Live, I'm making two really bright, cute cards using the Two Can Do This stamp set. Um, some really nice, positive sentiments in this set, so we're going to make some really, really nice cards. And I'm going to make two cards today using the Tropic Like It's Hot stencil. Um, I'm going to try a different stencil technique. But before we go on to that, I just want to draw your attention to these new storage pockets that we've got on sale in the store. These storage pockets have been designed um, by myself, so they've been made to my specifications with from some really high quality mylar, um, and they are perfect for storing all of your um, all of your products. So um, your larger stencils, like we've done here, um, your larger dies. They've got this really nice little lip at the top, which allows you to access your products inside really easily and here I'm just show I just showed the guys how I store mine so I use a magnetic sheet to pop my uh, coordinating dies on I keep the insert from my stamps and then I pop them both into the storage pocket and then I'll add a label to the top corner there so that they're easy to identify these um, are also a perfect size for your larger dies. So for our, I think our quilted nesting dies are probably the largest dies that we do, and they also fit perfectly. So that means that all of your items can be stored in the same size pocket um, and then stored in whatever um, kind of storage unit that you use, and it keeps them all a uniform size. So I just wanted to share that with you because you will see that in some of the demonstrations that we do in the future. So and they are definitely worth checking out, especially since we still have a sale on until tomorrow evening. And um, so you can get 20 percent off those at the moment. Uh, sorry, 15 percent off those at the moment. So on to our stenciling technique. So the, I've left this part in. This is the bit that went wrong on the night. <laughs> we were live. Um, so things do go wrong, um, but I was trying to put together my sandwich um, for for creating an embossed effect using your stencil, which is a new technique to me and maybe to many of you. But you get this um, this kind of um, chamois leather feeling type shim in your um, in with your dies, whether that be an electronic die or a standard die. And the combination that I used, um, I think I got. I got right at least once during the during the part the first part of this, but we couldn't figure it out. No matter what I did, um, and whichever combination of plates, it just didn't work. So you see the little example at the top of the screen there. I have done it previously and it worked perfectly fine, but for some reason it just wasn't happening for me at this point. So we decided to pop that to one side and forget about it for now because it just wasn't happening. So instead we moved on to doing some stamping. So that's what we're going to do now. We're going to do some stamping. So I'm taking three of my images, um, three of my tokens. I'm going to stamp those little guys up um, using my stamping platform here. And I'm going to use some of my Memento Tuxedo Black Ink um, just to stamp those little guys up um, onto some of our super smooth cardstock. So this is a piece of our A5 cardstock that I've just cut down to size. Um, and then I've stamped those, those guys on there. Um, and now I'm going to colour them using my Copics. So the colour combination that I've used for the feathers um, is the cool grey combination, um, starting with the C3 at my lightest point and then working towards my darkest point with the C7. However, I did decide to pull out this BV29 shade, which has got some um, a bit of a violety um, hue to it. Um, to create the very darkest point of those feathers because when you see feathers um, in pictures and in real life they do tend to have a bluish tinge to them um, so in nature they uh, rather than being pure black there is a little bit of a blue there so I thought that this color combination worked really well so you can see there that I've left the center portions of the larger toucan is really light and then the top of the smaller toucan's heads um, in the palest grey just to create some highlights and um, illusion of um, some curves there. Moving on to our beaks, um, I'm using a nice bright combination of yellow for the beaks. So the Y02 and the Y06 and the Y35. The Y35 is there just to add a little bit of a shade to create some, um, some dimension. So for the larger toucan's beak here, you'll see that I've applied um, a full um, 
base layer of the lighter yellow and then using that darker shade to add some um some shading to the top of the beak and the bottom and leaving that center portion um really pale so that that creates a bit of a curvature to to the beak and i'm going to do the same with the a stripe across his beak so keeping the center portion really light and then adding my shade at the bottom and the top so i've used the green um accent for the larger toucan's beak and then for the tail feathers of those little toucans and then i'm going to use some teal shades for the accents um the opposite accent so for the larger um toucan i'm going to use this these teal teal colours for his tail feathers and then for the, the head feathers um, of the smaller toucans. Um, and it's worth noting that the BG-13 is actually uh, darker than the BG-15 here. So um, I'm not sure why, why they're numbered in that way, but uh, it is just worth pointing that out. So um, I'm now die cutting each of my images using the coordinating dies um, and you see here that they've cut out really, really beautifully. Um, and like I say, we're going to split those up and create two cards. So here's my sandwich. It's A plate, B plate, shim, card, stencil. I'll repeat. Plate, B plate, shim, cardstock, stencil. And that worked beautifully. As you can see here, we've got a really, really beautiful embossed effect on our two pieces of cardstock. So we're going to use those now to create two card bases. So the first one I've used um, the one of the dies from the Hello Nesting Dies uh, set. Um, and I'm just creating a nice uh, large rectangle from that first piece. The second piece, I'm going to use one of the square uh, dies from the um, quilted square nesting die set. Um, and I'm just cutting that out of the center of my, my, um, my stenciled pattern there. Um, and I'm then going to cut um, that again to fit on a square card blank. The piece that I've cut out of the center there, um, I'm going to use as a focal cover on the um, the top folding card blank. So that will be used um, as well. Um, so we'll use the waste of that for the for the other card. But for this one, you can see here, I'm using another die to try and cut that out. But it moved in my die, uh, in my die cutting machine, came out all skew with. We were having, I was having a bit of a nightmare <laughs> during these lives. So we did have to um, do that one again. Um, so in the meantime, I am just cutting some frames um, using those nesting dies again. So I've just laid two of those up and cut out a couple of frames. And then for um, our center our center portion that we cut out of that embossed, at first embossed panel, I'm gonna add some color with my Distress Oxide inks now. So using my beautiful blender brushes and a combination of cracked pistachio, peacock feathers and mermaid lagoon, um, I'm just adding some color to that embossed panel. And you can see how it's really pulling out those, um, those images. They look so, so nice um, with that bit of color, pop of color. So we were doing two cards at the same time alongside each other. So um, I have edited this to try and make it make as much sense as possible, but we did flip between the two. So for the card base and um, for the square card that we're making, again, I applied that same combination of Distress Oxide inks and just added some of the color to the center of my card blank. So this is one of our uh, card blanks. They are super smooth, um, 290 GSM, bright white and perfect for blending straight onto so we can blend straight onto our card base here um, and we'll get a really really great effect so we've added that background color and now i'm going to add some splatters of water so i'm just taking the nozzle out of my um, water spray there because i wanted some bigger droplets as well as some of the finer mist and i'm using a tissue just to blot up the excess for our sentiments, I am using some black, some of our licorice black cardstock, and I've cut a strip to size to pop into my stamping platform. And I'm using two of the sentiments from the uh, Two Can Do This stamp set. The uh, uh, two, just the little token of my affection, and the Two Can Do This sentiment. 
And I've just um, added a bit of my um, anti-static tool to that cardstock first um, as we're going to be doing some heat embossing. So I'm using my WOW embossing ink to stamp up those sentiments um, and add those to get a nice clean impression. And then adding some of my white embossing powder to each of those. Using my, my little tweezers there to stop me burning my fingers, I'm applying some heat there to each of those sentiments so that they set. I'm going to use one of the sentiment strip dies that comes in the Hello um, nesting die set to cut out each of my sentiments. And while I'm doing that, I'm just doing a little bit of playing around with my um, configuration of frames here on this, uh, this square card. Um, so I did originally have an idea of staggering those frames just to create a little bit of extra um, interest. And while it looks good on screen here now, I think maybe could I have made it work? Just during the live event, I wasn't happy with how it looked. Um, I couldn't really get it set up right. Um, and I felt it might have taken away some of the focus from those cute little images. So in the end, I decided to abandon that idea. And I also felt that my sentiment strip might have been a little bit on the large side. So going back to the other um, sentiment, we've used that same guy to cut that one. And I'm trying to cut this other, uh, this two can do this sentiment to a smaller size, um, kind of trying to achieve a, I suppose, um, a squarer shape. And while that's going through the die cutting machine, again, I'm looking at the configuration on our um, portrait card. So um, now I've got this, uh, this sentiment cut out, you can see there that it is just too big. So I've taken a smaller die, which is from our Say Anything um, die set, um, coordinating die set. And this is um, a much better size for the, the for the card size that we're making. Um, and I, I didn't trust myself to just use a trimmer to cut it down because I'm not good with um, straight lines. Um, while that's going through the machine, I've put some foam pads onto our square panel that we redid because our first one was wonky. Um, and I've attached that to the card base. And then I'm going to attach one of the frames over the top, just using some liquid glue um, to add that on there. And then we will um, attach our sentiment at the bottom again with a bit of liquid glue just to the center of that frame. So you can see that's a much better size for the size of card that we're, that we're creating. Using some of my little foam squares here to add some dimension to my toucan. So I'm just gonna pop him in place on one side and then do the same with the other the little token and when I came to position him I realized that I hadn't left quite enough room so they were getting a little bit too snuggly so I did manage to just prise the other one up a little bit and move him to one side so their beaks are just touching. So moving on to our larger token um, I'm just looking at where I want to arrange all of my elements here and making sure that I've got that where um, where I'm happy and I'm going to add a little fishtail banner to that sentiment as well and I'm, I'm happy with how that's all looking so I decided to add my embossed panel using some of these foam strips so just adding those onto the back and then popping that in the center of our top folding card base. And then for the little focal panel, I added a few splashes um, and spritz of water there just so that it coordinated with the other card that we've made. And I'm going to add this panel then just slightly off center um, because my sentiment is going to be in the on the opposite side so it will just create that little bit of balance so it's just slightly towards the right hand of my card and then um, my sentiment will be to the left to attach my token I'm just going to cut down some of my foam pads here um, and just to add a little bit of dimension so just popping those onto the back and using my poke tool to help me get the um, the tip off the back of those pads and then I'm going to use the same same strips just to add some dimension to that sentiment strip which will add to the bottom left. 
So I'm pretty pleased with how they're looking, but it did need some extra embellishments. And in the coordinating dies for the two can do this stamp set, you get this little die which cuts out three different size hearts. So these are perfect to add as little embellishments to your card. So I'm just looking now, I've cut them out of some of the licorice black card stock. And I'm just looking to see where they might fit um, on each of those cards. Now, um, in the end, I thought that that was a little bit too busy on the smaller card there. Although on screen, that does look really nice. So if I was doing it again, I might have added some more of those embellishments. But in the end, I opted for just the one um, between the two, the two little, little uh, two comes kissing and uh, three to the larger card um, and I'm just going to use my quick sticks tool to help me position those um, as I add some of my liquid glue so just a little dot of glue doesn't require a lot and then just use that tool to help me get them in the right place and um, this is such a great tool for picking up little embellishments like this um, rather than trying to chase them around your craft desk so the last little touch was to add some of that black glaze pen to his eye, but uh, as things were not going right on the evening, that did smudge. <laughs> so um, once that's dried, I was able to correct that with some of my white jelly roll pen. So that was, that was fine. So for the most part, any little uh, mistakes can usually be um, rectified or covered up somehow. And then I'm using some of my glossy accents to um, make those beaks really nice, um, nice and shiny. So that's uh, our cards complete. Two cards done this um, in this tutorial. Um, so they both coordinate together and make for a really nice set. Um, I hope that you enjoyed um, the demonstration today. Um, it did show you where things can, can go wrong for us all at some point. Um, but again, they can be easily rectified. If you did like the tutorial today in the video, then please do like and subscribe our channel. Hit that notification bell to be alerted to any more videos in the future. And we'll see you again real soon. Thanks again for watching. Bye bye now.